The new Kodiak is going to be one of the fastest non-pressurized single-engine turboprops. It's quite fast and it still maintains a lot of its stole capabilities. So as you can tell, the new Kodiak is all about speed. Our engineers spent years designing and getting all the drag reduction that they could out of the airplane. And you can tell that by the flap track fairings that we've added, of course the wheel pans. People look at you know the, the beautiful exteriors of, of cars or airplanes and go, ooh, that looks fast, but there's a significant role in what, what's called internal drag, so how ducting is routed through, how carefully you expand the flow to slow it down, how you neck it back down, and, and how it exits the airplane. So we spent a lot of time inside the engine compartment redesigning the oil coolers, uh, making sure there was a way for the air to get out of the cowling after it got in, in a, a smooth way, so that it wasn't interrupting the flow on the outside as it came out. Everything from the, the, the shape of the inlet to the shape of the cowl to the, how the inlet ducts for the oil coolers are routed and so forth, everything is optimized for speed. One of my new favorite features that's speed related is the cargo pod. So the new Kodiak has an integrated cargo pod. It's really designed to be a part of the airplane and not an afterthought. So the cargo pod now has a pass through and then it has a rear hatch, so you can actually open up the rear and put long things through. So uh, fly fishing poles, we've had camera equipment in there, we've had uh, tow bars, just, I mean, anything long that would normally not fit in a cargo pod uh, will fit in this cargo pod. And I find the utility of that to be really quite astounding. The great thing about the, the test bench is Every single engine parameter that we've done or every single message that you're gonna get, we get to go test. Before we even got it even close to putting on an airframe to go fly it, we had tested and tested and tested and checked and rechecked and um, everything else in the software. So that was quite an accomplishment that we had. Because of the test bench, we were able to get all the functions and features changed and designed and developed basically before the airplane was ready to fly. With developing a, you know, a software package for the Kodiak airframe, one of the really cool features is, you know, the G1000 over any other product is we work really closely with Garmin and they did a lot of super neat little features for us that makes the, the software really Kodiak specific. From the, you know, the, the flight control trim, you know, there's some really neat features in there on uh, some color changes and when you're in the right mode for takeoff, just a lot of little things that, the, that just make it unique to the Kodiak. Um, so we take that great base software or the feature set of you know Garmin avionics of getting to some place and now we've brought it into the airframe. The new Kodiak is a performance machine. I mean, it's like a spaceship. You, you take off, your climb rate is well over 1,500 feet a minute. It's, in fact, there's times when I get 2,000 feet a minute climb out. So the original had a maximum takeoff horsepower of 750, and then the, uh, the cruise max continuous power was 700. And this one's 900. At the beginning of this program, there, was, there were questions about, well, we've optimized for speed. I wonder if the, if the performance and climb is really gonna drop off compared to what we're used to. The performance really knocked our socks off. Uh, the climb rate really was far exceeded what we have, what we know for the Kodiak 100, which itself is a great performer. And the, the speed um, really kind of caught us off guard as well for this airplane. We designed for it, um, we had built for it, and the numbers told us that would happen, but not until you really get in the airplane and fly it and see the number on the screen, um, do you believe it? So that first flight was really a great milestone for us. It flies as well at 70 knots at the slow end of the spectrum as it does at 210 knots at the high end of its spectrum. Uh, it's got great handling, uh, slow speed, and the landing pattern in the climb and just in cruise. So uh, 
uh, it was really, it was the whole package that we had set out to create from the beginning. A beautiful part of, of that performance too with, with the new Kodiak is even though it has a higher fuel consumption rate, the performance is so good, you get to altitude much faster uh, and, and level off. So you actually burn a lot less fuel getting to your optimal cruise altitudes. And then once you're there, you're just, you're really moving quickly. The level of flight speed for the new Kodiak is, is much higher. So you can actually get to that VMO um, in level flight all the way up to about 8,000 feet. Whereas with the original Kodiak, uh, you could only get to VMO basically at sea level. So the, the true airspeed goes up as you go up in altitude, which is why it's much, much faster in terms of true airspeed. So we are actually getting about 210 knots maximum cruise speed at 10,000 feet with this airplane. Uh, the new Kodiak is also extraordinarily smooth in flight. We have that high coefficient of lift wing that came from the Kodiak 100. And I find that in, even in turbulent flight and turbulent air, it, it just kind of it just kind of goes right through the air. It doesn't seem to really affect passengers. And of course, we have the Garmin Autopilot with three axis, so the yaw dampener really keeps that the tail now that's a, a little bit further away from the engine. It, it really keeps the yaw under control. And, so far, the people I've gotten to fly in the airplane really seem to enjoy the, the, the back of it. I'd say the wing is probably the most proprietary piece of the aircraft because of its split leading edge. The outside leading edges are at a different lower angle of attack, which allows you to fly at much slower speeds with controllability. So in a full stalled condition in the new Kodiak, you can still control the airplane and point it in any direction you want to go. It is forgiving at the slow speeds. It's forgiving at the stall. It doesn't really have any poor stall characteristics uh, that I would say. With the flaps up, uh, the aircrew probably won't even know they're stalled because you really have to hold the stick to the full aft position with the flaps up to be considered in a stall. With the flaps down, uh, you will have a definite signal in what we call a wing brake. So you'll have a slight wing drop that indicates to you the aircraft is stalled, but that's really all that it does. The nose doesn't wander in, in any direction and the wings pretty much go back to level. And most importantly, when you're beyond that stall, when you're too slow, you can still point the nose where you want it to go and you can still control the wings. That's very important because it allows the pilot time to recover. It allows the pilot time to break the stall, add the power, fly out of the condition of the stall. At the higher end of the envelope, we design for speed, we design for better aerodynamics. So at those higher speeds, it's a smoother ride. That was something we really wanted to focus on. And you can see it when you look at the outside of the airplane, the shapes are much more aerodynamic at the nose, at the cargo pod, we have fairings on the, on the flap tracks, uh, and we have wheel pants on the airplane. All those things contribute not only to the speed, but they contribute to the feel inside the cabin and inside the cockpit. It just, it feels a lot smoother at those higher speeds. You have an airplane that can loiter at 80 knots or it can sprint to 210 knots. And its cost per hour is pretty low compared to other aircraft of its, of its type. So it's going to revolutionize in its speed and its efficiency. What I particularly liked about the new Kodiak is the fact that uh, uh, we are uh, finally getting out of the more utilitarian aspect of the aircraft with introducing speeds. And in fact, speeds that are above 200 knots. So that is something that the team has been good here in Sandpoint in doing, making sure that uh, you clean up the airframe and you're gonna use every and all of that engine efficiently and uh, that has been a remarkable work that has been done. 